In June 1962, inmates Clarence Anglin, John Anglin, and Frank Morris escaped from Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, a maximum security prison located on Alcatraz Island in San Francisco Bay. Three men escaped from notorious Alcatraz Island Penitentiary in 1962 and have never been apprehended. The U.S. Marshals Fugitive Investigations site has published age-progressed images of the men, who would be in their 90s. Frank Morris, John Anglin, and his brother, Clarence Anglin have never been located since escaping the facility, which was at some point home to criminals like Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Robert Stroud. Late on the night of June 11, or early morning of June 12, the three men tucked papier-mâché heads resembling their own likenesses into their beds, broke out of the main prison building via ventilation ducts and an unused utility corridor, and departed the island aboard an improvised inflatable raft to an uncertain fate. A fourth conspirator, Alan West, failed in his escape attempt and remained on the island. Hundreds of leads were pursued by the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, and local law enforcement officials in the ensuing years, but no conclusive evidence has ever surfaced favoring the success or failure of the attempt. Numerous theories of widely varying plausibility have been proposed by authorities, reporters, family members, and amateur enthusiasts. In 1979 the FBI officially concluded, on the basis of circumstantial evidence and a preponderance of expert opinion, that the men drowned in the frigid waters of San Francisco Bay without reaching the mainland. The U.S. Marshals Service case file remains open and active, however, and Morris and the Anglin brothers remain on its wanted list. New circumstantial and material evidence has continued to surface, stoking new debates on whether the inmates managed to survive. Inmates Frank Morris Frank Lee Morris, born September 1, 1926, was born in Washington, D.C. Orphaned at age 11, he spent the rest of his childhood in foster homes. He was convicted of his first criminal offense at 13, and by his late teens had been arrested for crimes ranging from narcotics possession to armed robbery. He spent most of his early years in jail serving lunch to prisoners. Later, he was arrested for grand larceny in Miami Beach, car theft, and armed robbery. Morris reportedly ranked in the top 2% of the general population in intelligence, as measured by IQ testing, 133. He served time in Florida and Georgia, then escaped from the Louisiana State Penitentiary while serving 10 years for bank robbery. He was recaptured a year later while committing a burglary and sent to Alcatraz on January 20, 1960, as inmate number AZ-1441. John and Clarence Anglin John William, born May 2, 1930, and Clarence, born May 11, 1931, were born into a family of 14 children in Donelsonville, Georgia. Their parents, George Robert Anglin and Rachel Van Miller Anglin, were seasonal farm workers. In the early 1940s, they moved the family to Ruskin, Florida, 20 miles 32 kilometers south of Tampa, where the truck farms and tomato fields provided a more reliable source of income. Each June they migrated north as far as Michigan to pick cherries. Clarence and John were reportedly inseparable as youngsters, they became skilled swimmers, and amazed their siblings by swimming in the frigid waters of Lake Michigan as ice still floated on its surface. Clarence was first caught breaking into a service station when he was 14 years old. The brothers began robbing banks and other establishments as a team in the early 1950s, usually targeting businesses that were closed, to ensure that no one got injured. On January 17, 1958, Brothers John, Clarence, and Alfred Anglin robbed the Bank of Columbia in Columbia, Alabama. All received 35-year sentences, which they served at Florida State Prison, Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary, and then Atlanta Penitentiary. After repeated attempts to escape from the Atlanta facility, John and Clarence were transferred to Alcatraz. John arrived on October 24, 1960, as inmate AZ-1476, and Clarence on January 16, 1961, as inmate AZ-1485. Alan West Alan West was born in New York City. West was arrested over 20 times throughout his lifetime. He was imprisoned for car theft in 1955, first at Atlanta Penitentiary, then at Florida State Prison. After an escape attempt from the Florida facility, 
he was transferred to Alcatraz in 1957 at the age of 28 and became inmate AZ 1335. Escape The four inmates all knew each other from previous incarcerations in Florida and Georgia. When they were assigned adjacent cells in December 1961, they began formulating an escape plan under the leadership of Morris. Over the subsequent six months, they widened the ventilation ducts beneath their sinks using discarded saw blades found on the prison grounds, metal spoons from the mess hall, and an electric drill improvised from the motor of a vacuum cleaner. The men concealed their work with painted cardboard, and masked the noise with Morris's accordion on top of the ambient din of music hour. Once the holes were wide enough to pass through, the men accessed the unguarded utility corridor directly behind their cell's tier, and climbed to the vacant top level of the cell block, where they set up a clandestine workshop. Here, using over 50 raincoats among other stolen and donated materials, they constructed life preservers, based on a design Morris found in the March 1962 issue of Popular Mechanics, with the article, Your Life Preserver, How Will It Behave If You Need It? Morris found other ideas in magazines, resin to make a lampshade in the November 1960 issue of Popular Mechanics, and signposts of water safety about channel buoys indicating course and navigation hazards, in the May 21, 1962, issue of Sports Illustrated. They also assembled a 6 by 14 foot rubber raft, the seams carefully stitched by hand and sealed with liquid plastic available in the shops, and heat from nearby steam pipes. Paddles were improvised from plywood and screws. Finally, they climbed a ventilation shaft to the roof and removed the rivets holding a large fan in place. The men concealed their absence while working outside their cells, and after the escape itself, by sculpting dummy heads from a handmade papier-mâché like mixture of soap, toothpaste, concrete dust, and toilet paper, and giving them a realistic appearance with paint from the maintenance shop and hair from the barbershop floor. With towels and clothing piled under the blankets in their bunks, and the dummy heads positioned on the pillows, they appeared to be sleeping. On the night of June 11, 1962, with all preparations in place, the men initiated their plan. West discovered that the cement he had used to reinforce crumbling concrete around his vent had hardened, narrowing the opening and fixing the grill in place. By the time he managed to remove the grill and rewiden the hole, the others had left without him. He returned to his cell and went to sleep. From the service corridor, Morris and the Anglins climbed the ventilation shaft to the roof. Hauling their gear with them, they descended 50 feet, 15 meters, to the ground by sliding down a kitchen vent pipe, then climbed two 12-foot, 3.7 m, barbed wire perimeter fences. At the northeast shoreline, near the power plant, a blind spot in the prison's network of searchlights, and gun towers, they inflated their raft with a concertina stolen from another inmate, and modified to serve as a bellows. At some time after 10 p.m., investigators estimated, they boarded the raft, launched it and departed toward their objective, Angel Island, two miles to the north. Investigation the escape was not discovered until the morning of June 12 due to the successful dummy head ruse. On June 12, 1962, prison staff conducted a routine morning check of beds when they noticed the three convicts were not in their cells. Instead, their beds were occupied by dummy heads made of plaster, flesh-toned paint, and real human hair that apparently deceived the night guards. Multiple military and law enforcement agencies conducted an extensive air, sea, and land search over the next 10 days. On June 14, a Coast Guard cutter picked up a paddle floating about 200 yards 180 meters, off the southern shore of Angel Island. On the same day and in the same general location, workers on another boat found a wallet wrapped in plastic complete with names, addresses, and photos of the Anglin's friends and relatives. On June 21, shreds of raincoat material, believed to be remnants of the raft, were found on a beach not far from the Golden Gate Bridge. The following day, a prison boat picked up a deflated life jacket made from the same material 50 yards 46 meters, off Alcatraz Island. According to the final FBI report, no other physical evidence was found. FBI agents surmised early on that the men had drowned. They cited the fact that the individual's personal effects were the only belongings they had, and the men would have drowned before leaving them behind. However, no human remains were found at the time. FBI investigators announced their official position that, 
While it was theoretically possible for the men to have reached Angel Island, the odds of them having survived the turbulent currents and frigid waters of the bay were negligible. According to the final FBI report, West said that they had planned to steal clothes and a car upon reaching land, but no such thefts were reported in the immediate area. Reported Sightings In January 1965, the FBI investigated a rumor that Clarence Anglin was living in Brazil. Agents were dispatched to South America but found no direct evidence that he was there. A man called the Bureau in 1967 claiming to have been Morris's classmate and to have known him for 30 years. He said he had bumped into him in Maryland and described him as having a small beard and mustache, but refused to give further details. Family members of the Anglin brothers occasionally received postcards and messages over the years. Most were unsigned, one was signed Jerry, and another Jerry and Joe. The family also produced a Christmas card, purportedly received in the family mailbox in 1962, saying, to mother, from John. Merry Christmas. The mother of the Anglin brothers received flowers anonymously every Mother's Day until her death in 1973, and two very tall, unusual women in heavy makeup were reported to have attended her funeral. Robert said that in 1989, when the father of the Anglin brothers died, two strangers in beards showed up at the funeral home. According to Robert, they stood in front of the casket looking at the body a few minutes, they wept. Then, they walked out. A 2003 Mythbusters episode on the Discovery Channel tested the feasibility of an escape from the island aboard a raft constructed with the same materials and tools available to the inmates, and concluded that it was possible.